In this episode, I am showing you how to sublimate a t-shirt for beginners. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, where I show you crafty tips, tricks, and tutorials almost every single week. So if you're new around here, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button. And while you're at it, also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because y'all do not want to miss out on a single crafty or crickets or sublimation minute. Now y'all, today we are doing a t-shirt sublimation for beginners and I honestly just could not be more excited. So the few things that you're going to need to make all this happen is obviously a sublimation printer or a regular inkjet printer that has been converted into a sublimation printer. Now I am using a Sawgrass SG500 sublimation printer today. This thing just works so so well and I'm just honestly so in love with it. By the way, Everything that I use or mention in today's video will be listed and linked down in that description box below. And I will also include any discount codes if applicable. And also side note, if you're getting anything from 143vinyl.com, you can use my code, which is crafty, that will save you an additional 5% on your entire order. And at the very same time, it actually helps support this channel. So it's like a win-win situation. And I just could not be more grateful for you all whenever you all decide to use that. We're also gonna need some type of a heat source to actually set our design into our material, right? And I am actually using the StarCraft Mint Clamshell Heat Press right back there. I just love, love, love the StarCraft Heat Presses. I have both of them and they are just super, super high quality. I just, I could not ask for anything better. They're amazing. And there's a reason that they have like a cult-like following. Those things fly off the shelf as soon as they're in stock. They're just amazing. We're also gonna need some type of a t-shirt to sublimate our design into. And I am using this t-shirt right here, this like raglan style, baseball style t-shirt. Now, I do highly, highly recommend using a type of t-shirt that has at least at least 60% polyester or higher. My own personal preference, if you want like a really vibrant, bold design, my, prefer my personal preference is going with 80 to 90% or higher. This particular shirt is 95% polyester, and so it's gonna have a really nice, vibrant design, and I'm just so, so excited for this. And one of the last, but certainly not least, things that we're gonna need for all this to happen is a design to sublimate into our t-shirt, right? So let's go ahead and head over to designbundles.net and I'll show you the one that I'm using. All right, so as you can see, this is a Halloween SVG bundle. It has 70 designs. And at the time of filming this, it is currently marked down half off from $4 down to $2. Now I have also just received a discount code from designbundles.net and fontbundles.net, and that will save you an additional 10% on your entire order. And that discount code is Mr. Crafty Pants. All just one single word, no period after Mr. Just M R C R A F T Y P A N T S. So this right here is honestly an amazing deal. There are so so many designs to choose from. Now you may be thinking right now, well these are SVG designs, Michael. Don't we need like a PNG file or something along those lines for sublimation? And you would be correct. So let's go ahead and scroll down on this page real quick. And right here, it says that the package includes the following file formats. And right here is a PNG version of that file. So yes, you can get the SVG file, but you can also get the PNG with it as well. So we're gonna take advantage of that and actually use that for sublimation. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick at all these designs. They are just amazing. I love them, love them, love them. Now I am making this shirt for a friend of mine and they are wanting this design right here that says Peace, Love, Halloween. However, don't feel like you are stuck to just that. There are so many amazing designs to choose from, some really, really great ones. So let's take a look at those real, real quick. Here is another version of that Peace, Love, Halloween right here. I'm also a pretty big fan of this monster one right up here as well. That messy bun style is just so, so, so on trend right now. Let's take a look at what else they have. I mean, the possibilities are really practically endless with all of these. And, and don't feel like you have to put these just on shirts. You can actually make signs with these as well for home decor, which is so cool. Again, there's just so, so, so much to choose from. There's that monster one that I love. Ah, oh, these are just so freaking cool. I, 
I just love, love, love them. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and head over to Canva, canva.com, because that's actually the design software that we're using for today's sublimation project. All right, so Canva actually does have a paid version as well as a free version. I personally have the paid version. However, I created another account with the free version so I can show you all exactly how to go about doing all this absolutely free. You don't need the paid version for this at all. So first thing we're gonna do is come up here towards the top right hand side of the page and click on create a design. And then we'll come right down here and select custom size. And as you can see right here, we can go ahead and put in our width and our height. Um, however, it is currently set to pixels. We wanna change that unit of measurement over two inches. So let's go ahead and change that over to inches. And whatever you set the size to be, I personally recommend setting the size to be the size of the paper, or the sublimation paper that you're using for that project. Now, the sublimation paper that I am using is eight and a half by 11, but depending upon your sublimation printer and the size format that it can handle, the size of your sublimation paper may vary, right? But for me, it is eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna go in here and for that width, I'm gonna do 11 because we're actually doing a horizontal layout for our design today. So I'm gonna do 11 for the width and 8.5 for the height. Then just hit enter and as you can see, here is our blank canvas. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and upload our design into Canva. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the page, click on uploads, and I'm gonna click on upload media. And then I'm gonna click on device. And here is our big Halloween bundle right here. So let's go ahead and just scroll through here and find the Peace Love Halloween. All right, so here is Peace Love Halloween number two. Let's see if that is the right one that we're looking for. It is not, so let's go ahead and back out of there. I'm assuming it is the Peace Love Halloween number one. Here we go. Let's click on that. And here is our file right here. This is the PNG version. Let's go ahead and click on that and then select open. And as you can see right here, here it is uploaded into our files. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and click that and drag that right over here onto our canvas. And then we can basically resize this to fit however we want it to be on our actual sublimation paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this little resize handle right here, drag this outwards like so. And I'm thinking something along those lines right there should do the trick because if we actually grab our t-shirt that we're using, I'm gonna lay this out real quick. For my particular t-shirt, I really wanna take up as much room onto our sublimation paper as possible because I think that really the size of the sublimation paper period is gonna be a really good size for this t-shirt. However, it is completely up to you how big you want your design to be onto your t-shirt and then you can just size that accordingly. All right, so one thing that is really important for us to do is to go ahead and mirror our design since we are doing sublimation. We wanna make sure that we flip this or like reverse this horizontally. And so the way that we can actually do that is by coming up here towards the top of the canvas and clicking right here where it says flip. I wanna flip horizontal, just like that. And really that's, that's all there is to that. So let's go ahead and come up here towards the top right hand side of the page, click on download, and I'm actually gonna change the file type over to PDF print, just because I want this to be a really, really high quality document. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and then select download. All right, so here is our download. Let's go ahead and open this up. There we go. And what I'm gonna do now is come up here towards the top right hand side of the page, click on this little print icon, this printer icon. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come down here and select more settings. And then I'm gonna come down here and select print using system dialog. Now here's the thing though, depending upon what type of computer you're using and what type of printer you're using, this might all look a little bit different. So take some of this with a grain of salt, but typically what you'll wanna do is find somewhere where it says system dialog or something along those lines for additional or more settings. So let's go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, it brought out this little print box. And so we are obviously gonna to wanna to change where it says Canon Pro 100. I'm gonna to, wanna to want to go ahead and change this down to Sawgrass SG500 or whatever sublimation printer that you're using. And I'm gonna come down here and select layout. And from there, I'm gonna come down here and select setup. 
Now just keep in mind that a lot of these options will be based upon what type of printer you're using and what type of computer you're using as well. So your screen may not look like mine right here, but basically what we're gonna to want to find is print quality or like the print paper settings. And so for me, I can go ahead and click on setup and then I can click on print mode. Now I have actually went through and tested out quite a few of these different print settings. And for me personally, what seems to look the best is the inkjet plain paper high quality. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and select that, but I do highly recommend going through and running at least a few different print tests with your sublimation printer and your sublimation paper, just to make sure that you have the best settings possible. Then we're gonna go ahead and just hit print. All right, so here is our sublimation design right here. Now, you may be noticing that the colors do not look super vibrant on the paper like this. And that's the thing with sublimation is the colors are not gonna look super vibrant or super bold when they're on the paper. Now, once we apply the heat to it with our StarCraft heat press right back here, that will actually activate the sublimation ink and turn that into a gas that will then be absorbed into the polyester of our shirt. So the higher the polyester count, the better it will actually be able to absorb that sublimation ink. So super, super cool. So let's go ahead and get this all set up on our heat press. Now I am gonna go ahead and preheat my heat press to 400 degrees and also make sure that the timer is set for 40 seconds. Now while that is heating up, I am gonna go ahead and lay out my t-shirt onto my heat press. And I'm also gonna go ahead and insert a pressing pillow inside of it as well. I just wanna make sure that these seams right here, wherever the black meets the white, I wanna make sure that those don't interfere with us actually getting a really good solid press onto our design and onto our t-shirt. I am also taking a sheet of butcher paper and inserting it inside of the t-shirt on top of that pressing pillow just to make sure that none of that sublimation ink leaks through the shirt and onto that pressing pillow. Also, once we actually place our design onto our t-shirt, I'll go ahead and cover that up with a piece of butcher paper as well, just to make sure that none of that ink seeps through the top of the paper as well and onto our heat press. All right, so our heat press is now at 400 degrees. So let's go ahead and close down the heat press at medium pressure. And this is all per the directions of the sublimation paper that we're using for this project. It does say to do this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 40 seconds and at medium pressure. Now I can't say as of yet which sublimation paper that I'm using for this project because at the time of recording this, it has not yet been released and I am just currently testing it out. However, if you are watching this in the future, be sure sure to check out the description below because, well, it could very well be updated with the name and the link to the particular sublimation paper that I'm using, which I do, by the way, highly recommend. Now also, per the directions, once the time is up, you wanna go ahead and lift up the heat press and immediately remove the sublimation paper, just lifting it straight up and off of the t-shirt or garment or, or really whatever it's being applied to. Now, one of the things I'm really, really loving about sublimation is just how permanent it really, really is. So take a look at this real quick. You can see how it actually permeates the fibers and actually becomes part of the shirt. It can be stretched, it can be moved, it can be washed. I mean, it's just all around just absolutely amazing. It moves with the shirt, it's actually one with the shirt. So if you're the type of person that doesn't really like the feeling of HTV or of a heat transfer vinyl on top of your clothing, then sublimation could be a really, really great option for you. Now, if you liked today's episode or if you learned something new, I honestly spend so many hours I mean, even so many days preparing and filming and editing videos exactly like this one right here. So if you did like it or if you learned something new, please let me know by stamping that like button and also by dropping a comment down in the comment section below. Both of those things make this entire job just that much more worthwhile. It honestly makes my day. And at the very, very same time, it really does help me out so much here on YouTube. So just thank you, thank you, thank you so much in advance for that. Also, if you're wanting some crafty inspiration on the weekly, you may also wanna consider stamping that subscribe button and 
Also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because I put out new crafty tips, tricks, and tutorials almost every single week and you do not want to miss out on a single crafty or cricket or sublimation minute. Thank you all so, so much for watching today's episode. Y'all honestly just mean the absolute, absolute world to me. I'm just so extremely grateful for each and every single one of y'all. And until next time, stay crafty.